Okay, good morning, everybody. Great to have you with us. Happy Saturday. Um, I wanted to start off with a couple things real quick. If you go to Freedom Equity Group website on the front page, real easy to find now, is March Madness, the mega event. That's uh, early bird registration. Uh, myself, Al Cardi, and a few other people have already registered. That is um, 119. Just basically click on this. It will take you there. Uh, as of December 1st, it starts going up to 149 and then 199. And um, you know, as we talk about on the rise and shine is when an, an, an event is announced, a major event, you register. And then you figure out how you are going to get there and how you are going to rearrange your schedule. That, that's the only way to do it. <clears throat> My recommendation is to get your ticket now while it's, you know, why, why not save yourself uh, anywhere between 50 bucks and uh, almost $100 by, uh, by registering early and doing that. And then secondly is a room block is going to be announced here very shortly at Planet Hollywood. That's where the event's going to be held. And because it's Mar March Madness, um, hotel rooms are more expensive than normal in Vegas. Now, Vegas hotel rooms are you know, pretty much a bargain anyway, but um, we'll be able to save ourselves a lot of money by getting in on that room block. It's my understanding that 100 rooms have been blocked, uh, so they, th th that room block is going to sell out really fast. So when, uh, the, when, we get, when we put out the word about the room block being um, um, announced and made, you know, whatever, uh, block out and, and res reserve your room. Um, we wanted to talk just a little bit, a little briefly uh, update on uh, President's Club. And uh, you know, we're, we're excited about that. We're in the process of putting together our list of qualified associates, Sprint Award winners, Fast Start, Fast Track, and of course our pins and our shirts are in, uh, in process. You know, that's a game changer for, uh, for us and our team. And, uh, and I know we've talked about it before. We're not going to train on it today, but um, it, is, uh, it is absolutely a game changer for us and our business. Um, and what I wanted to do next was jump into our training. Um, Al, did you, uh, did you want to talk at all about Vegas or um, uh, President's Club? Yeah, I, I want to just reiterate that, you know, Vegas, look, I've seen people explode from these type of meetings. And, um, you know, that's, it's four and a half months away. We want to make sure that a couple of things that our team is represented very strongly, but more importantly that you make the investment in yourself to make sure you're there because the info, it's, they're much different than a red carpet event. All the providers are there. There are exhibit booths, a lot of information a lot of great meetings that occur in and around those. We'll have a special session for President's Club members as well. So I encourage everybody to go uh, uh, you know, and, res and get your registration as, uh, as soon as possible, certainly before December 1st, because I can assure you the price is going to go up and it's never going to come back down to 119 So it obviously makes total sense to do that. And I, I just want to touch one more time on the President's Club in terms of what it stands for. Keep in mind, folks, and you've heard me say this several times already, it's not about shirts. It's about your measurement for your success from starting point to ending point, which is a seven-figure income. And that would be the black and or eventually the red shirt. Okay? So we really what it does is it breaks it down step by step. Now, on, uh, you, you will notice by Sunday night, early Monday morning, you're going to start to see some names show up that are qualified associates that have already qualified uh, because you're already here for the President's Club. Keep in mind that December 1st, the only way to qualify is to either be a sprint winner in the first 10 days or to actually earn your first level, which is essentially five qualified associates and five sales in a 30-day period. So for everybody that's already on the team, you're getting the benefit of a early bird type program, if you will. And I can assure you President's Club is going to be where it's at. Those are going to be the people that will have uh, some personal coaching, 
will have more access to the leaders, uh, will be invited to special events. Um, and right now it's, it's pretty simple for you to be there. All you've got to do is become a qualified associate, which is what? You need to register for your licensing. Uh, if you already have it, that's done. You need to put your list together. You need to take care of your own personal plan. You want to introduce your spouse if you have one to the business. Uh, and you want to introduce uh, three to five people to the business, to the opportunity, via your trainer, manager, what have you. Uh, clearly, many of you have already done all that. Uh, those of you that haven't, you know what you need to do because those are the five steps to being a qualified associate. After December 1st, the only way you can get there, for those of you that are already here, is to qualify for your first level shirt. Okay? So here's what I say. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done quickly. Get in the club uh, and be part of that next level of leadership and coaching uh, that you, uh, I'm sure you're going to want to have, okay? So Brian, I'll turn it back to you and we can get started with the training. Thanks, Al. Appreciate that. Uh, let's, let's jump into this. <clears throat> this morning, we're, you know, the, the topic was uh, falling off a log, uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, I, I can't think of any other uh, um, you know, you know, cliches to, to, to talk about this. The idea in the topic is, um, you know, what we're doing with the living benefits and the crusade in a very simple, uh, very easy way to get started and going with us. Look, half of America doesn't have life insurance and the other half has the wrong half. And uh, we're not selling death benefit. We're not selling um, you know, life insurance in the old traditional way. We're selling it uh, as a crusade for living benefits. And most people do not have any protection against the critical illness, the chronic illness, the cancer, the heart attack, the stroke. And, um, you know, getting someone started on an inexpensive term uh, product and policy is really a, a no-brainer. Again, it's like falling off a log, uh, shooting fish in a barrel, and so on. And then we can always upgrade their status um, and their position later, but at least we got them covered uh, right from the get-go. So. We put together this presentation, and this, uh, this came from uh, Al coming back from Las Vegas, and uh, there's, there's other teams in Freedom Equity Group that are having tremendous success and tremendous income, and the only thing they're focused on is living benefits. And we, we think that's really smart, uh, smart idea. Now, we're going to go through this after this t today's training. We're going to put together a client presentation that you can use out in the field. Uh, and realize that you know we're going to, as we do with everything that we do, continue to strive to improve, to upgrade, uh, and so on as as we go through. Okay, so let me jump right into it. Um, you know, he, here's the problem, and, and and I like this this segue. Here's the problem. Here's the solution. You know, 70% of the population will suffer critical critical or chronic illness such as cancer, heart attack, stroke, and live, but be financially crippled in the process. You know, Rick Bannis talks about, I save people from financial catastrophe uh, when, when asked what it, what it is that he does. Um, as we're going through this presentation and this training, um, the day before yesterday I was talking to Al Cardi, and he started rattling off a lot of these statistics. Now, he wasn't in front of a presentation, but he knew the numbers and the statistics. Uh, to, to impart to people how big of a problem this is and what their chances of, of, of financial catastrophe really are and how devastating it can be to the family as well as financially devastating as well. So here's my point. I would encourage you to get really comfortable with the numbers and the statistics. I think most of the folks on the team know the 7 out of 10. Uh, start to start to extract a lot of these other numbers and statistics so when you're talking to someone, you can convey to them the gravity, uh, the sense of urgency, and the need for that. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stories that we have collected as a team. Um, some of them have happy endings, and some of them, unfortunately, don't have happy endings, and uh, they're, they're extremely powerful. So I'll... Uh, 
you know, feel free to jump in uh, anytime you want to add any color or background or clarification on any of these uh, slides as we go through. Okay, buddy? Okay, so here are some of the stats and some of the numbers. Uh, every year, over 6 million Americans suffer heart attack, stroke, or cancer. 1.2 million Americans suffer a heart attack every year. 17 million Americans are alive today have survived uh, a heart attack. So it's, um, it's the, the expense, the downtime, the out of work, the out of pocket, the uncovered expenses that uh, push people into bankruptcy. And, uh, you know, the medical side, of course, and the tragedy and catastrophe and what it does to the family, and then, of course, one spouse is unable to work or not work as effectively, and then you're worried about how am I going to pay my bills, as opposed to just focusing on recovery and having the, the, the money and the ability to do things that maybe if you don't have or don't have the insurance or the coverage or the wherewithal to do that, um, to, to not have to worry about that, okay? Stroke, each year 795,000 people suffer a stroke and many end up permanently disabled. What a catastrophe. 3.5 million new cases a year, average cost $146,000. Over 65% of the expenses are indirect and are not covered under traditional insurance. And, I, and I've got a couple of sh stories to, to share with you about that how having this insurance literally, in our opinion, saved someone's life. They were able to get treatment while they were waiting for their um, insurance carrier to approve uh, their health benefits. They took the money from this program, went and had the surgery, completely recovered, paid cash for it, and the insurance company was still trying to figure out if they were going to pay, pay their claim or not. Months later, right? Um, and uh, 11 million people currently living with cancer. Amazing. This statistic uh, is, is burned into my brain, and I think it is, um, uh, I, first time I heard it, I thought it was absolutely astounding. Uh, seven out of 10 Americans who reach age 65, 70%, one in 10 will experience cancer, heart attack, stroke. You think about that, 7 out of 10. And, you know, I, I've said before that if I had a 70% chance of getting struck by lightning, I, I wouldn't leave the house. Um, that, that I find just absolutely astounding. Um, Al, you want to cover this slide, buddy? Sure. Mr. Carter, you still Yeah, can you hear me? I sure can, pal. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, you know, when, when you think about living benefits, I mean, here, here's what I want you to understand and, and, uh, and, and make the shift in your brain, is that what we're offering is living benefits. The vehicle that provides the living benefits is the life insurance, okay? So as opposed to offering life insurance with living benefits, here's the adjustment I want you to make. It may be subtle, but it's important, is start offering living benefits in the vehicle is life insurance. That's how they get that, okay? So if that makes sense to you, then here's what really all you have to do. Do you want to prepare against a critical illness or prepare for if it should happen, right? If you're out of work for six months, a year, year and a half, if you have excessive medical bills? Well, I'm sure you do. And, you know, let's face it. I mean, we just had Breast Cancer Awareness Month in October, right? Well, they don't have a whole month dedicated to breast cancer awareness because it doesn't happen, right? Clearly, when we, when we think of breast cancer, well, look, that can happen to you at 25 and that can happen to you at 75. So there really is no time frame on when something like that can happen. For men, it's prostate cancer. When can that happen? Well, it can happen at any time. It can happen when you're very, very young. It can happen when you're very old. But the point is, if something like that were to happen, would you want to be covered? Yes, okay. Well, here's the three things they look at. The three things are, number one, the type of illness. You see them all to the right there. Those are all the different critical illnesses that are covered. The second thing that determines the size of the claim or the check that you'd receive 
is the severity of the illness, whether it's slight, moderate, or severe, right? And of course, terminal. And the last thing is the amount of the benefit. The amount of the benefit is totally on the amount of insurance that's purchased, right? So in other words, if we look at the average claim is anywhere between 30 and 70%, right? Now, terminal is higher, but let's just talk about a critical illness that's, uh, we'll say, 30 to 70% potentially of the claim. So just let's use the median of 50%. So if you wanted to have a check for 250000 well, how much insurance would you need to purchase to, to insure, not insure, but to get that average? Well, it would be 500000 right? If you wanted 300000 then you'd need six hundred. So uh, the point is the amount of the benefit is determined by the amount of insurance that you purchase. And that can be done with term. So you see the shift here, and we're going to create a presentation. This is for training today. But we're going to create a presentation that is geared towards living benefits with some real life stories, some real events that have occurred, both um, in situations. We've all heard of the situation of the, the individual who who unfortunately was very, very young, and ultimately it became terminal. But we have other stories of people that are alive today and have received critical illness benefits, and I'm sure Brian's going to share them to you, well, share them with you here in the next few slides. But here, here's the summary of this slide. There are only three things that trigger this, right? The type of illness, the severity of it, and the amount of the benefit. So, Mr. and Mrs. Client, we don't know if it's going to happen. All the, the probabilities per statistics are high. So number one, do we want these things to be covered? Yes. We won't, obviously, we'll never know what the severity is until the situation occurs. The question becomes, if you are out of work for a year or a year and a half, how much of a benefit would you need? What type of income would you need? Well, you know, I'd need 150000 And what about excessive medical bills that today with a lot of uh, insurance plans, health plans, there are co-insurance plans. There are things that aren't covered because they don't maybe deem them medically necessary. Well, it's hard to determine what that number is, but statistically, uh, it's somewhere between 100 and 150,000 is not uncommon for a, uh, for a severe illness. So if we looked at two to three hundred thousand dollars, would that be a reasonable number that would get you through that tough time? Well, yes, it would. Okay, so now we as agents know what to do to determine what amount of coverage they should have to provide that benefit. You see, so <clears throat> you can see the switch here. The switch is not as well. You're getting life insurance, and oh, by the way, you have living benefits. No, no, you have living benefits, and the vehicle used is life insurance and we have different buckets that people will fall into meaning there's different life insurance venues we can use to accomplish this goal so Brian if you want to move on yeah before we do Al I just want to point out over here that this is there are 16 triggers this is Anico and um, not all companies and of course very few life insurance policies today have this and very few pay. In fact, Anico is the strongest when it comes to uh, accelerated benefits. And, and I think what we'll do, Al, is we'll number these 1 through 16, uh, you know, these first three being the big ones, but then these are all of the others that Anico covers. Okay, we'll jump into the circles. Al, you, you came up with this slide. Why don't you do it? Okay. Well, the circle is basically, you know, if you're sitting down with someone, the way to use this is to, you know, essentially they would put 10 random names in the outside circles. And what this is designed to do is really to get them thinking about what could happen, okay? And you'll notice, that, and then what we do is we ask them to randomly X out seven of the 10 circles. And the reason for that is because, see, 7 out of 10 people save less than $100 a month, and you see that off to the circle on the right. 7 out of 10 will suffer a heart attack, stroke, or cancer and be alive at 65, but may be crippled financially, right? And 7 out of 10 people retire on less than $10,000 a year. Now, the reason why we ask you to X off 7 of them randomly is because you don't know who they are. Those 10 people 
that you care about, family members, friends, what have you, you don't know who may suffer a situation, but you now have the answer to how you can help them through their problem, okay? And this is a great way to get people to identify 10 people right up front. It's a great way to put them right in the situation. So for those of you, I'm sure you've, if you haven't seen this before, if you just start thinking about the 10 people that would fill those circles, <clears throat> and by the way, you're not exempt either, right? None of us are. We never know when something like this could strike and, uh, you know, are we protected? And that's really the point here. The point is to get people thinking about you don't know. I mean, if we knew, it would be different, right? So, again, it's not about dying. It's about what if you had an illness and lived. So this helps really paint that picture for people. <clears throat> and, and, of course, you know, the question is what if? What if you got sick and could not work? How long could you go without a paycheck? You know, you know, some many folks today are living paycheck to paycheck and cannot skip uh, a single paycheck. With you know, uh, I've heard uh, you know most families are four flat tires away, uh, uh, two paychecks and four flat tires away from from uh, the poorhouse. Well, the good news with um, with uh, medical science today is that uh, your chance of survival. Is uh, is really quite high, right? With heart attack, 60%. And this was the statistic that uh, Al um, repeated to me the other day, which was 98% of prostate cancer. <clears throat> um, you know, medical science is wonderful today. Uh, the good news is that um, that many people are surviving these things. The bad news, of course, is the financial uh, catastrophe uh, that that happens. So you know, as we put, when we put this uh, and and put all the dot all the I's and cross the T's on the presentation, uh, I would recommend going through this enough times so that you're comfortable with the stats and the numbers, uh, so you know you can read things upside down and stuff like that. I love this. Uh, who's the who is the goose? If you had a goose that laid golden eggs, and um, you you had to insure either the goose or the eggs, which would you choose? The goose or the golden eggs? Well, the, go the goose, of course, right? What, what do most people do? They insure the eggs. They insure their house, their boat, their cars, their things. But isn't it better to insure the goose? And who's the goose in this case? Isn't that you? Aren't you the goose that lays the golden eggs? Something happens to the goose, the, the golden eggs are bye-bye. Are so I would, I would say that most people got their priorities backwards. They really should be protecting themselves first, especially with these astounding numbers and statistics and the chances uh, of, of them having a, a major illness, a, a critical illness or a chronic illness or an accident. Um, you know, we, we have stories of, of young people um, having accidents and being paralyzed, and you know, the list goes on and on. So uh, what is the solution? Well, we've, we've talked about, uh, you know, as Al said, living benefits on a life insurance platform or a life insurance uh, <coughs> chassis, if you will. And what's the alternative for people today? Well, they could go out and they could buy all these programs separately, life insurance, disability, chronic illness, critical illness, and, uh, and spend, you know, a, a lot more for each one of these if you started to add them all up together. Well, why not do it all inside one single package, one single solution that has no additional cost? There's no additional cost for these riders. If you run Anico's products against the competition, what you're going to find is not only is there no additional cost, but Anico's products are extremely competitive out there in the marketplace. They beat just about everything that's out there in, term, in terms of prices. So it's an awesome price with included at no additional cost. So what's the opportunity? <clears throat> you know, I heard uh, Petro talk the other day about Primaricus, you know, uh, in, in his area of California. Uh, they're selling thousands and thousands of term life insurance policies uh, every single month. Those policies do not have living benefits. In fact, what Petro said was uh, those are all the more products and programs for us to go and replace, right? Again, back to um, you know, half of the country doesn't have insurance, and the other half has the wrong kind. So, uh, protects against 
critical illness, heart attack, stroke, cancer, major, major organ transplant. You know, we have a gentleman on the team uh, who had a, a liver transplant. Uh, it wiped him out financially, completely wiped out all of his savings. Uh, we, we have others with, who have had a heart attack. You know, the, 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 stories, um, the stories really are, are, uh, are heartbreaking and heart-wrenching, um, and, they, and they sell uh, because people can identify, uh, and especially in their own life as well. Chronic illness is unable to perform two out of six activities of daily living. It, it didn't say how it happened, right? It, it, it didn't say as a result of this or that. So it could have been anything from as horrific as the Boston bombing to uh, a meteor or space junk falls on your head, whatever. Um, but if you're unable to perform two out of six activities of daily living, bathing, eating, transferring, dressing, continence, and so on, really important stuff, right? Um, and then, of course, terminal uh, illness. Uh, upon terminal diagnosis, uh, two years up to uh, $2 million is accelerated. And so our solution is to, uh, to get a check. Um, and this was a check. Uh, this, this unfortunately doesn't have uh, such a happy ending. Al, you want to tell this, uh, this story? Sure. This was, uh, this was actually an agent of ours uh, at Freedom Equity Group. And this was a 32-year-old guy who bought a $380,000 policy, uh, preferred. Now, those of you who understand the life business, when you're preferred, I mean, of course, he had a full medical. They did the lab work, and he was a preferred case. Well, he made about eight premium payments on this term policy of $380,000, uh, which was about $500 out of pocket, and he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. And uh, unfortunately, in his case, it was terminal. Hard to believe that, you know, eight months prior, he was a preferred case. And here we go, eight months later, he's got stage three stomach cancer. But here, here's, the, here's the key point. Uh, a, yes, he did get a check for 344000 And what's important here is who the check was made out to. See, when you have health insurance, and we all do, um, and people do, who do the checks get made out to? See, if you go to the doctor, who gets the money? Do you get the money and then pay the doctor? No. The money goes directly to the doctor. The money goes directly to the hospital or to whatever facility it is. In fact, the only thing you really get is the bill that wasn't covered, but you don't see the money. See, the difference with a living benefit is the check goes to you. See, this check went to Juan, and Juan received this 344000 to spend that any way he likes, whether it be to pay off medical bills. As a matter of fact, one of the comments that were made out in Vegas is, you know, one of the clients asked um, uh, one of our leaders, you know, do I have to pay the doctor? And they said, well, you know, you probably should, but, you know, I guess you don't have to, right? I mean, the point is the check was made out to him. And this is really, really key. So this didn't happen to be uh, a real happy story. Unfortunately, he did pass away about eight or nine months later. But here's what it did do. It gave him peace of mind. And in that time period where he was trying to recover and trying to fight the cancer, he didn't have to worry about money. He didn't have to worry about losing his house or his kids eating. <laughs> and, you know, when situations like this happen, if you have a spouse, typically they're not working either because who's taking care of you, Right. So it gets very, very difficult, and the financial burden that was removed from this family, and unfortunately for Juan, in his last few months, was significant. And this is the kind of thing that we do, okay? You know, um, fact, was, Al, oh, I'm sorry. There was another woman who, uh, and, and this is just to, again, remind everybody of the point that the check goes to you. There was another woman who had a half a million dollar policy and uh, this was through AGLA, American General Life and Accident, and she received a check for 442000 And what she did, uh, in her case, it was also uh, an unfortunate terminal case. She was in her you know, uh, late 40s uh, or early 50s. She took the money and she bought a house for her daughters so they could live in a home without any mortgage. So the value of her receiving the money in her hands, tax-free lump sum, to do what she pleased with 
is really a significant value. Okay. Now, those were a couple of stories that unfortunately ended in debt, but you know what? They don't all end that way. I mean, we all know a lot of people who have had maybe cancer, uh, you know, breast cancer, uh, uh, you know, a heart attack or prostate cancer or something like that, and they're alive today, and that's how we know about it because they told us about it. I mean, I have three people in my family. Two had prostate cancer, one had a heart attack, and they're completely uh, fine today. I mean, I guess as fine as you can be when you have something like that. But my point is, years have gone by, and they're still alive, and they're still fine. Well, there's a lot of stories like that, and we can impact those families financially. So we don't prevent the prostate cancer, but 98% of them survive it. Wouldn't it be nice to get a check? We can't prevent it, so they got it. But they got a check for two, three, four, five hundred thousand, 500000 whatever the number is, and again, it's based on those three triggers, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that really take the edge off? Wouldn't that kind of put a different spin on it, at least financially, for those people who have suffered those illnesses and all those that will uh, behind this? And as Brian said, medical advancement is huge. It's a very, very good thing. Right? I mean, awareness, it's very good. They catch things early so people live longer. That's great. But financially, they're devastated. So that's where we get back to, and I'm, you're going to hear me say this several times, it's about living benefits, and the vehicle we use to provide the living benefits is the life insurance. You know, you know just to tell you a quick story, for those of you that are familiar with the AFLACs and the colonial lives of the world, uh, which are providing these voluntary benefits for employees. Here's what I want you to put in perspective. Um, <clears throat> Aflac sells, I believe it's a cancer policy. And I, I don't know how much it is, 5 or $10 a month. It's not a lot of money. But what it says is that if you get cancer, they send you a check for $4,000. Now, you might say, well, that's great for $5 a month. But when you think about the cost of a term policy for a person that's you know, 30, 40, 45, 50 years old, in comparison to the amount of money that they could receive. I mean, it's, it's not even a comparison. I mean, to get a check for $4,000, it's better than not getting one. But what's it really going to do for somebody? I mean, we really have an opportunity to impact them in a significant way, okay? I mean, those same two people we just talked about, because remember, benefits trigger after 30 days, so it could be a million-dollar policy that you're spending $80 a month for term, and 30 days later something happens. Well, if the average benefit, I'm just using 50% as a median, you know that that's not an exact science, okay? Well, that would be $500,000 that could go to that family for an $80 check if that were the cost. So what we're doing is monumental for families who suffer these illnesses, and let's face it, more and more do. So, you know, as you can see on the screen, look, there's a bunch of people that we know of in the past because we weren't in the business that, you know, got sick and they got all kinds of cards and they got all kinds of phone calls and, uh, you know, get well cards. But you know what they didn't get was money. They didn't get the money they needed to survive. And that's unfortunate. And we, we basically say, look, it's your choice. I mean, you can get the get well cards because you'll still get them, but you can also get a check and take all the pressure off your family. So <clears throat> clearly, this is the message we need to be communicating to people, not insurance, the critical illness. Okay? So look, we've got a solution for every family, and I think this is the easiest way to get the message across. Everybody's familiar with term insurance. Term insurance is simple, right? You have it for a predetermined period of time, anywhere from, we'll say, five years to 30 years. And in that time frame, if you were to die, you got an income tax-free death benefit. Now, you do have to die to get the money, okay? So in the typical term policy, the old term well, you can have a million-dollar policy, but if you're still alive to talk about it, guess what? You didn't get paid, right? And neither did your family. So there are no living benefits, and the bottom line is you've got to die to use it. Well, what's the new term? It's still an income tax-free death benefit. 
However, you have no-cost critical, chronic, and terminal illness riders that can pay up to 90% of cost that being terminal. The same term policy. Now, of course, it's going to cover you if you die, but it's also going to cover you if you're sick. So what we're saying is life insurance, you don't have to die to you. So let me put this in perspective, Mr. and Mrs. Client. If you have a term policy right now and you have the old term, would you want to exchange it for the new term with no additional cost for these riders? I, I can't imagine anybody. In fact, nobody does. Nobody does say no to that. You have to understand. And those of you who are out there talking to people, but that's a quick way to do it. Now, this slide talks about we've got a solution for every family. We just talked about the term. Income tax free debt benefit, you'll notice I put there 30 years. Why? Because we have as much as a 30 year term. No cost critical chronic and terminal riders, up to 90% payout. Living benefits, you don't have to die to use. But we also have another product. It's called a guaranteed UL or a GUL. And this has got all the same thing income tax free debt benefit forever. Now, I say forever, it's till 121 years old. As far as I'm concerned, that's forever. Uh, maybe 20, 30 years from now, 121 won't be forever, and it'll be 150. But for now, to me, that's kind of forever, okay? Uh, pay, can pay up to 90% benefits until you're 121 years old. Well, how do these products fit the market? Well, let's say you have somebody in the 60s. The guaranteed UL, because maybe they're past the, 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 the point of max funding an IUL, the GUL is a good product because it private, provides them, we'll call it a perma term, a level term for as long as they want. If they're 60 and they want until they're 105, they can get a guaranteed level product for 45 years, and it has living benefits. Great long-term care alternative. You know, you have people that say, well, I don't want to buy long-term care because, you know what, if I don't use it, it was kind of like a waste of money. I don't know if I'm ever going to need that. I have no plans on going into a nursing home or any of that. Nobody plans for that stuff, folks. It just happens. So the point is, <clears throat> what the GUL does is it gives them a long-term care through the chronic illness benefit that if they don't use it, they didn't lose it. That money will pass on to the heirs as a tax-free death benefit. Great product in that scenario. And then, of course, we've got the granddaddy of them all, in my opinion, and that is the IUL. What do you get in addition to the no-cost critical chronic benefits, up to 90% payout, benefits to 121? You get tax-free income. You get market-like returns. <clears throat> you get a retirement you can't outlive by with an alternative retirement plan so in the IUL you have all of the above and it's all included so when we say we have a solution for every family regarding living benefits we do we absolutely do whether it be the term so Brian just go back a slide please so let me let me kind of put this in perspective for you from a training standpoint okay of course, we're going to create a, a client presentation, but from a training standpoint, what's the real important piece of what we just talked about? The important piece is the awareness to living benefits, right? The next piece is what product best fits their need, right? That makes sense? So if they're 25 years old, or let me just use a scenario, 30 years old, don't have a lot of money right now, what's the best fit? Well, term insurance. If they're in that 60 plus market where they're approaching retirement, so they're not really going to fund a, uh, an IUL or max fund it, well, the GUL may be the perfect scenario. And then, of course, there's a lot of different scenarios where the IUL will work, but my point is it starts with the living benefits, and then we determine what is the best product for them based on affordability, based on need, based on life circumstance. It may even be a combination of the two, right? If you're 35 years old, <clears throat> it would certainly behoove you to start an IUL for three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a month and then buy a little cheapy term for 30 bucks a month, which will double your coverage and provide additional living benefits. Well, you'd do that if you were 35 because 
you can buy a half a million for probably $30 a month, very, very inexpensively. So my point is, it still gets back to providing the need on the living benefits and then determining the vehicle by which we provide the need. You see, so I think as a new agent out there, what's important for you to do is sell the living benefits, right? Sell the need of the living benefits. And then you can get some help in terms of what's the best vehicle to put them in. So if you bring me a scenario to a one-page fact finder and show me, look, here's what the client is presently saving right now. Here's what they're putting in their 401k or not putting in their 401k. Here's their present position. We can show them alternatives. Here's proposal one. Here's proposal two. You can have a combination of both. You can have both of them or you can have one or the other depending on the need. But here's my final point and then, Brian, you can move on. If right now they don't understand IUL and perhaps you don't fully feel comfortable marketing IUL, A, two solutions. A, bring a, a qualified leader or trainer with you that understands the product or put them on a call or on a join me or B, at least get them to term product. If they have the term product, they're covered, right? If a 35-year-old's got a $500,000 term policy for 30 bucks a month, he probably has a benefit, medium benefit of at least 50% of that, potentially up to 70%, maybe as low as 30, depending on the situation. And they're doing this for 30, 40, 50 dollars a month. But what's important is you, as a professional, have done your job. You've provided them a living benefit. It can always be upgraded. It can be convertible. It's convertible for any time to a permanent plan, no proof of insurability. None of that has to be done again. It's already been done. They've already qualified for it. So that's the real important thing. So the first solution is get with a trainer that can help you present the IUL if you're not comfortable with that. Uh, or secondly, get them into the term plan. You can always go back and talk to them at another time and convert it but you walk away knowing you did a good job for that family. Awesome. Thank you, Al. You know, um, you know, I look at it as good, better, best, and, you know, each fact pattern is going to be different for each individual person. I love what Petro said the other day, which was, uh, you know, term is like uh, buying with the option to own, or uh, renting with the option to buy. Um, the GUL is, of course, owning. And then the last one, uh, the IUL, is uh, you retire with it. So you can rent it, you can own it, or you can retire with it. Um, I thought that was, uh, that was terrific. Thanks, buddy. Great job. Um, and, and, of course, uh, you know, the granddaddy of them all, if you really look at, um, in the big scheme of things, um, what is the most inexpensive way to buy life insurance? And that is an index universal life. But... Depends on their budget, their monthly. Some folks can't afford to to put that out, and so on. And, and I think Al did a, a, an excellent job talking about that. Um, th this uh, this is a story of um, uh, a personal friend who, um, uh, and, and of course, th this is not her picture. This is a picture of someone else. And um, but it's a personal friend who, um, a young single mother, bought the policy, made four premium payments, and uh, called me on the phone and said, Brian, I've got a um, I, I've got a big problem. My, my first thought was, oh, my gosh, you know, she's paying $250 a month. And um, I thought, you know, she, she's struggling maybe to, to make the premium payments. Well, let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, she, great health. Uh, wh one of those natural yoga, uh, yogurt um, type uh, gals, you know, very healthy, no drink, no smoke, um, eat right, sleep right, exercise, not an ounce of fat on her body. And uh, she said, no, I have, uh, I have cancer. And uh, uh, this was, uh, I was relatively new um, with uh, Life of the Southwest. This was a Life of the Southwest policy. And um, I I'm first claimed uh, that I had paid, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I hope they paid the claim. Well, well they did pay the claim. Now, single mother taking care of a child, uh, mortgage payment, car payment, food payments, 
et cetera, and plus all of the out-of-pocket uh, expenses and the worry and concern of, am I going to survive this? Folks are coming to see her, uh, you know, the, the get well cards and the baked ZDs and the flowers and everything else, and uh, I fortunately um, was able to, uh, to walk in the door with a, with a six-figure check. <clears throat> the check was uh, $106,789, uh, and now she is um, five years uh, cancer-free. Um, you'd, you'd never know it to look at her, what she had, what she had gone through. But uh, the story actually continued. After her recovery, this allowed her to recover, her brother had cancer. Um, and she became the primary caregiver for her brother. Now, her brother did not have uh, insurance or insurance like this with living benefits, so there was no one to care for her brother. So she was now in a position to be able to do that because of this check. Uh, and she became the primary caregiver to her brother, who uh, eventually died. But what what an incredible uh, and, and you know when when you deliver a check like this, it's under very uh, emotional circumstances, and uh, there isn't a dry eye in the room, including the agent, me. Um, the the uh, it changes you forever. Um, now, I, I can't save anybody medically. I can't save anybody spiritually. I, I don't have those skills, but I, I can help save them financially, and that's what we do. And, um, you, you know, th this is really serious, life-changing stuff. And for, you know, literally pennies, uh, pennies we can get someone protected. I, I believe strongly enough in this, and, and I hope you do as well, that um, we have to have a great sense of urgency with uh, the people that we come in contact with. Uh, God forbid one of these horrible things happen to them. Maybe we can't save them medically. Maybe we can't save them spiritually. But we sh sure can help to save them financially. Okay? Hey, Brian. Now, that, this yeah. woman, she bought, it was a $200,000 policy, and it was a term policy, right? No, it was a, an IUL. It was a $200,000 IUL. Okay, so she had a two hundred thousand dollar IUL. She made four premium payments of two fifty a month. Right. Right. So she she put out a, a you know thousand dollars out of her pocket. Uh, unfortunately, she got breast cancer. She got a check for one hundred six thousand, which was just over fifty percent. Uh, and five years later, she just celebrated her five years cancer free. Uh, boy, we made a big difference in her life, didn't you? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you know, we were talking about before the check is made payable <clears throat> to the person, right? Uh, not to the doctors or anywhere else. Uh, was talking with uh, Billy Weinstock, and Billy was telling me, uh, you know, a little bit about. Uh, and and and, uh, and I know Billy doesn't mind if I share this because he, he regularly does uh, tell his story. Um, he was getting treatments down in Miami. And he had the assets and the wherewithal to, uh, to put his wife up in a hotel right next to the treatment facility so that uh, she didn't have to hassle going in and out and so on. And uh, the, the facility had 24-hour um, room service for food. Well, sometimes she didn't get there until late or early or whatever. And uh, it happened to be at the Four Seasons, um, which was the facility right next to it. Now, the, o the only other place would have been you know, a uh, uh, comfort suites with no, you know, th so just those little tiny things, uh, they don't seem so major now, but at the time were extremely important. <clears throat> uh, I, think, I think Billy said, I'll have to check with him, but uh, it was tens of thousands of dollars uh, in hotel bill. But, you know, when you're fighting for your life, um, that stuff doesn't become important. Uh, you, you know, relative to uh, to having your loved ones with you and so on. Um, you know, in, in telling the in telling some of these stories, uh, last uh, sto personal story I'll tell you uh, <clears throat> is um, uh, my best friend um, had uh, had an issue with his heart. Um, worked for uh, the uh, state of New Jersey, a fireman in Elizabeth. And uh, he had a little flap of skin on his heart. Now, now my buddy, uh, again, w w no drink, no smoke, exercise, runs marathons, weight lifts, 
they, they call him uh, uh, Johnny Atlas uh, in the firehouse because he's, he's in such great shape. Well, he called me, he said, I'm having, uh, I've been having some strokes uh, because the little piece of uh, skin on his heart was opening and causing to have strokes. Now, he works for uh, uh, the city, and supposedly his benefits are, you know, Cadillac uh, benefits. Well, they were denying his claim to have the necessary surgery to repair his heart, even though a former... Um, Oh, or I have to find out who the NFL player was. Professional football player had the same exact surgery a year later, was back playing professional football. So the uh, insurance company was delaying his claim and so on. Make a long story short, as they are uh, delaying his claim, he continues to keep having strokes. Um, some of them were small, and sometimes he'd have two or three of them in a day. I mean, it was absolutely frightening. My a couple of points here. My first point is I didn't approach my friend and talk to him about this uh, product and program because I didn't want him to think I was selling him. While he was going through this, I can't even tell you the agony that I was going through and how I beat myself up and tortured myself and said, you know, if I had at least explained this to him, I would have a much cleaner conscience and wouldn't feel as horrible about it, you know, God forbid he dies or strokes or paralyzed or, you know, whatever during the time. So my, my point to you is we can do a lot of good, um, you know, uh, put, put your fears aside. And, and, and the best way to approach closest family and friends is to say, look, this is important enough uh, that I, I almost don't care what you think I'm trying to sell you or not sell you or whatever it is, you've got to hear this story, and I want to make sure that you're properly covered and, and protected. Well, because my friend is very active in his union up there in New Jersey and politically active, uh, he got to the governor's office and, and so on. Long story short, they, had, um, uh, they were able to cut through the red tape of his insurance, uh, get his, um, the surgery necessary, and he's, uh, he's fine today. But, you know, it, it, could have been, uh, it could have been a horror story. If he had that check, he could have just walked in, had the surgery, sorted out the, uh, the, 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 the health claims and the insurance claims and what, what was covered and what wasn't later. Um, and in the meantime, he didn't have to go through having these strokes uh, uh, every day. So back to our program here, how, how simple can it be? Well, do you own life insurance? Do you have to die to use it? Um, and if you do, you need to consider uh, an upgrade uh, if you qualify. <clears throat> you know, do you have the old style or the new style? And uh, most people, of course, don't even know what you're talking about until you – it's a great way to open up the conversation. <clears throat> you know, and of course, if you own the, new, the old policy, would you like the new one? And if you knew someone who owned the old policy, do you think that they would like the new one? And it's a great way to earn – uh, extra income, um, and again, like I said, shooting fish in a barrel, falling off a log. You know, we, we use the income calculator here. I'm not going to uh, dive into it too deeply, but, you know, we said that, you know, uh, with an average premium of $100 per month uh, at, at the VP level, if you were to do six of those on a monthly basis, develop a team that was doing 36 uh, sales per month. Uh, by the way, there, there are um, teams that are doing hundreds and hundreds of these sales uh, every single month. Um, that, that's a $200,000 uh, income. You produce a couple of leaders that do about the same that you do, and you can see uh, what the income potential is. And this is, we're talking about doing uh, the term uh, only, not all of the other things uh, that, that are out there. <clears throat> I, I suggest and recommend, I, I put this up I can, uh, in the Facebook uh, group. You can download it from Facebook. This is um, an e-application worksheet. So once we put together the presentation, I suggest having a whole bunch of these paper apps with you. And I believe that it's as simple as um, talking to someone about it and not really taking no for an answer. You know, for, for the 
for about the, the cost of a cup of coffee every day, uh, you could be completely covered. And I'm not going to take no for an answer. And we're going to fill out one of these things, and, and, and we're going to do it and, and kind of go forward. And, and I think having this with you, I mean, you could fill this out on the hood of a car uh, and fill it in and, and input it into the computer later and receive uh, and take the payment uh, that way as well. And uh, this is the website. And if we have, do we have, uh, we're, we're running a little bit uh, short on time, but I just want to go to the website real quick. Write this down. This is the uh, Anico website, and I'll show you how you can easily, quickly do uh, uh, quotes on, uh, on the product, okay? Let's see. Uh, okay. So img.anicoweb.com. And we go over here, right here where it says term quote. By the way, this uh, uh, on, on here, sales resources, life, living benefits, there is a ton of great information on here, including webinars and so on. But let's just go to uh, term quote. And uh, basically uh, follow the fill in the blank instructions you know, 15, 20 year. Now we've got the uh, signature term or simplified issue up to uh, 250,000 depending on age. Uh, and then of course the state. And then you put in their date of birth, their sex, uh, continue, uh, whether they're a smoker or a non-smoker. Um, and then of course the coverage amount. So 250, and we'll do it as preferred, and uh, calculate. And then it will run the 10 year, the 20 year, the 30 year, uh, so on. So this is on a, um, and, and it will also take you right to the uh, e application once you have, uh, how old was this guy? What's 73? Is that 40 something years old? So you can see how quickly and easily Ryan, you can do the. Yeah, buddy. Simplified issue is not express underwriting. Simplified issue is something different. That's done in a group basis. If you're doing simplified issue like in a company uh, or group benefits, so you'd want signature term. Now, with signature term, you have express underwriting, meaning up to 250000 there's no lab work done. But simplified issue is a different product. It's only four questions, and it is a higher premium because it's done on a group basis very, very quickly in group environments. So you're going to want signature term, and then whether they are – if they're buying 250000 one and above, they can get one of the three preferred statuses if they qualify, or 250 and below, it would be standard rates, uh, which are good, uh, and there's no lab work required. Good point. Um, there we go. You can see the difference in the... Uh, in the rates. Cool. Um, let's click off the recorder and uh, open it up for questions. What do you think, Al? Sounds great. Great job, everybody. We got some questions here. Let's uh, stop the recording.